A lot of things need fixing up in this world, and we can start right here. Couples used to walk the sundown path. Kid ain't here for pleasure, though. Quick and careful is the only way to go. But then, somebody gets to the core before the kid. The floor starts giving way under the lighter step. A single panic squirt could bring the whole place down. So could a reckless kid, for that matter. Fragments of the old world rain from the sky. Stray valuables are lying everywhere. Kid thinks twice about risking his hide for a Well, the path ain't exactly open to visitors no more. Security is all fired up. position. But Calamity changed everything, even where the wind blows. Well, if we mastered the winds in the old days, we can do it again. But the question is, who else could have taken the core? Well, ain't no survivor stole the thing. Scumbag ate it by mistake. Tough break. Unlike the kid. That core ain't coming back. No, they used to ship live munitions down the path. Gas fellas need some shut eye from time to time. They get real cranky when you wake them up. In all this toil, Kid keeps coming back to an overwhelming question. Who else could have survived the calamity?
So he didn't find the core that time. But that ain't about to stop us. Ain't always much to say. The dead welcome him with open arms. The calamity took everybody after all. Kids sees it plain, frozen faces all around. These folks never saw the calamity coming, but someone did. Someone close. It was someone like him. Kid sees him there agape in the flesh. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. about to stop, no matter what. He's got so many questions, after all. Just ain't got time for answers. The Tundra Brothers didn't make it. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. Nor did the bird boy. Didn't make it. The Jawsons. They didn't make it. Grady Sr. Grady Jr. They didn't make it. But him, he survived. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? survives as well. Kid does what he has to do. What do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. We have to go. Please. He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind. Both to him and to each other for the first time. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home, too. Far to the east. We all lost loved ones in the calamity, he says. I don't know how I'm gonna go on without mine. He was born in the Tazel Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city, and he's lived here ever since. We fought the Ura decades ago. 
But that was then. Things are different between us now. Squirt cider will toughen you right up. Too bad about the musty aftertaste. Kid ain't finished here yet. The cores. You remember. That's why this place is coming together. That's why things are gonna be alright. Well, look what we have here. The kid takes fragments of the old world and makes them whole again. All it takes is some fragments, and the bastion makes it good as new. It packs a special surprise in every one of those arrows. Ain't never letting go of his old friend with a sturdy grip like that. We tracked down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. No use praying to the gods these days. No time for it either. Folks used to make pilgrimage here. Pay the respects to Pith, the bowl, Pith Orchard. Place is a dead end in more ways than one. Well, the gods are long gone now, and the Orchard Core is long gone too. Gods don't care about trinkets, but the kid ain't no god. Pith stood for something once. Something real. In time, though, the bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. Pith makes a decent scarecrow, at least. Then Pith lights up like a rodeo. Kid breaks him to bits. Must have been guarding that shrine. So what'll it be? Invoke the gods? Or tell him off? Pith. Kid decides to press his luck. Well, if the gods are alive, they must be plenty sore. Kid ain't never seen windbags that quick. Maybe old Pith would have scared him.
it ain't found the core, at least he found Zolf's precious shrine. Now we can build a shrine of our own, though I got some alternatives in mind. Zolf doesn't touch the thing. Says the god of commotion is no children's toy. The Ura feared the gods. We turned them into toys, put their faces on our walls. Turns out those old bones still have some spark in them. There's only one way in the cinder brick for you. The hard way. Sure, the city marshals may be gone. But now the force crawling with wood mags. Something that'll punch clean through the greasy hides. Windbags ain't much different from normal folks. All they want's a warm place to stay and a decent meal. Stairs, somebody's sure to trip. Cinder Brick gave him enough heat and metal to munch on for a while. Well, the fort ain't theirs by right. Can't blame him for one. So many of those sorry things hold up inside that old fort. Not a scratch on him as he presses on the higher ground.
get stash of grenades as their form of things get even worse. He's blasting everything in sight with that new fangled musket. Kid shows up just as Ulf's telling me about his own journey to the city. Seems the only thing the calamity saved for Zolf was his smoking pipe. The marshal seemed like good men, he says. They treated him with dignity. Zolf brought his antique smoking pipe all the way from the terminals. Even since the Ura surrendered to us, the marshals kept a wary eye on him. Sometimes a single look says it all. Kid's ready to get real personal with hammer and musket in hand. Finders keepers. You want to tune a scrap musket, you start with the barrel. Zolf's travels ain't much compared to what the kids had to go through for all this.
Behold the Pantheon. A Kobe. The gods never liked competing for people's affections. 